All right. In this video, I would like to share my birth story and um, some of the things that I'm really proud of about it. And yeah, so I'm just going to jump in. I got pregnant in 2014, 2014, and January of 2014 is when conception happened. And I knew that I did not want to have a birth at a hospital. I knew that the lights were really bright and that doctors generally like to get people in and out of hospitals. And so C-sections happen unnecessarily. Um, and just thinking about my cat who growing up made itself a little cave and then had the four kittens. I wanted to do that. Not four kittens, just one baby but I wanted to have a cave-like, darkly lit, you know, lit low light, etheric, meditative music playing. Like I wanted this very sacred space to birth my child. And fortunately for me, there's support from my mother and my partner at the time who were totally on board with me having my baby at home. As I started to tell people, especially at prenatal yoga and different things I was doing, that I was having my baby at home, people were shocked. People, the responses that I started to get from people were um, really astonishing and fascinating to me. I had no idea that it was so countercultural to have your baby at home. I didn't know this because I was born in a birthing center and my siblings were born at home. And I watched my littlest brother who's you know now six four but I watched him you know his head crest and, and him be birthed in the upstairs of my house I watched my mom give birth to him and it felt so natural and beautiful uh and the, the things I'd seen on tv shows and movies with the bright lights and the women on their back just seemed really intrusive and not supportive or nurturing for birth so that this is just that, that was what was normal for me. A home birth was a normal, that was what was normal. Going to the hospital was abnormal. That's how I grew up. So, of course, I didn't want to go to the hospital. So, I never went to the hospital. I never saw a doctor once. I did not have an ultrasound. I did listen to my baby's heartbeat and I did go see my midwife once a month, I believe. Um, and she you know, monitored things that she was supposed to monitor. And mostly what I remember is listening to uh, my baby's heartbeat and taking really good care of myself, eating really healthy foods, exercising. I swam about two miles a week, swam three or four times. And I taught yoga daily. So I was in very good shape. And when it was time for my son to come, I didn't know it was my son because I didn't know what his gender was. I never even had the option to find out what his gender was actually. And he, it was, it was um, eight and a half hours of labor and an hour and a half of pushing. And it was not painful. I don't remember it painful. I did a hypnobirthing. So I did some hip, hypnosis and um, meditations really uh, helping my mind embrace the idea that childbirth is intense, but not painful. And so that was my experience. Childbirth was intense and it was not painful until, you know, the very end, they call it the ring of fire when the baby's head actually gets pushed through. Like that part hurt. I remember that part hurting um, a little bit. That part was a little bit of a burn. There's a reason they call it a ring of fire. Um, but instantly after that, your brain produces oxytocin and lots of love hormones are floating everywhere. So the pain really goes away quickly. And it's an amazing process. Your, what your body does naturally, like you, you're, you were created or you came into form already whole and complete and able to fight diseases, birth babies, 
like humans are amazing creatures. Our bodies are totally magical. Like this, this body is very magical and can do so many things and bringing new life into this time is one of the most amazing things we can do. And that's exclusively for women, which makes women really amazing in my mind, because we are the birthers, right? This is, yeah, I could go on a full tangent about that, but I won't because this is a birth story. So my son, I actually, you know, I pushed him out. I caught him myself. I had my hands down there, right? And just kind of picked him up. And I looked at him and I was like, oh, he has a penis. It's a boy. Because I didn't know. And I was really excited because I intuitively knew that it was going to be a boy. Because women have dreams. Um, even before the two to three weeks, you, you, if you pay attention to your dreams and you um, are noticing, like your dreams will tell you the gender of your child. My dreams did. And I kind of didn't, I didn't really feel like other people would believe me. So I just said that I thought it was going to be a girl because I was told it was going to be a boy and I didn't like, I don't know. <laughs> I kind of freaked out about just knowing that it was going to be a boy. Like I didn't even have a girl name picked out. I only had a boy name picked out, Tanzan. Um, so anyways, it was an amazing, amazing thing. I never took any drugs. I had first trimester. I was a little depressed. <laughs> I had a little bit of depression. Uh, my hormones were a little off for that first trimester. Second trimester was bliss. Third trimester, you know, it starts to get a little uncomfortable. Um, that's about that as far as pregnancy. And then postpartum, I had my placenta dehydrated into pills and took it. And so I had no postpartum depression at all. And I really think that that is because I ate my placenta. So this is not the normal story apparently that um a lot of people have so this is one reason why I wanted to share it I am a huge fan and encourager of having your baby at home you really don't need anyone uh my mom was in and out mostly taking pictures the midwife was in and out mostly just checking on me and I was there with my partner the whole time just laboring um, in the, in the warm water, in the, in the water tub, on the bed, um, in the shower a little. So yeah, it's, um, it's a really beautiful, natural thing. And I think it is good to have an emergency plan, uh, you know, be close to a hospital, know which hospital you're going to go to if something happens. Um, but it's, your body does it, your body is magical. So I am very proud of myself for never going to a hospital and never even talking to a doctor. They kind of terrify me. <laughs> um, so I think that Western medicine is great for emergencies. I don't think a baby is an emergency necessarily. I would say like breaking your arm or your leg <laughs> or something like that. Like Western medicine is really good at that. Western medicine is not that great at preventative medicine or actually healing people or helping them do things that are already naturally happening. Like, so yeah, that's my opinion. That's how I view it. I think Western medicine is excellent for emergency care and we all need that sometimes. So I'm very happy that we have, <laughs> that we have medicine. Um, as far as like giving people pills for everything, I don't really agree with that. So anyway, this was my birth story. I hope that it was inspiring to you. And if you have any questions, you can comment or ask me about it. I totally loved being pregnant, even during the depressing parts. Well, those parts I didn't really like, but after that, it was great. I love being pregnant and I love my birth process. I loved being in labor and I loved having Tanzan and um, nursing, you know, really painful for the first couple days. I guess like a week because their mouths are small, but then it's fine. So, so wonderful bonding through nursing, like such a beautiful, beautiful thing. Um, and I'm trying to think of anything else I did that was pretty crazy. I think that's it. Baby at home, a my placenta, nursed. Yeah, I think that's all. So anyway, yeah, let me know if you have any questions and hopefully this was inspiring and interesting for you to watch. I love you and have a wonderful day or night, whatever time you're watching this.